So we're here this morning to inform the public that consistent with our initial complaint that was filed back in August of 2023, it was neck trauma, namely a fracture of the bones in the neck and damage to a baby Travion Taylor Jr. spinal cord that causes death and not any other complications associated with shoulder dystocia. Uh, we did this again a six months ago. I told you all what shoulder dystocia was. Shoulder dystocia just means when a baby is coming down the birth canal, the bones basically get stuck in the pelvis. It is a, a phenomenon that occurs. It is not extremely rare. Every uh, qualified, board certified obstetrician and gynecologist should know how to deal with it. And so that's what a shoulder dystocia is. For background purposes, for people who weren't, who weren't here six months ago, uh, Ms. Ross was full term on July the 9th, 2023. She was 37 weeks pregnant. And when she went into Southern Regional Medical Center, she went in with the full expectation of having uh, a healthy baby uh, when she was discharged. However, tragically, uh, during her delivery, uh, the baby was decapitated. Uh, the baby was decapitated for sure as a result of a complication from the shoulder dystocia. But the standards of care are very, very simple. When there's a shoulder dystocia, there's certain tried and true things that must be done, positions that may, must be assumed by the patient herself with the assistance of the nurses, things that must be done by the nurses, putting fundal pressure, things of that sort. There should be an alert that's made to all people in the hospital so that other people can come and get fresh eyes on the situation and give this baby the best chance of coming into this world full, whole, and healthy. Uh, and our complaint is very clear that we allege that this was not done. The cause of the death again was the baby's neck was broken while Dr. St. Julian was applying excessive traction on the baby's neck in the face of the shoulder dystocia. This is something that is clearly, clearly contraindicated. Uh, no credible, no reasonably competent obstetrician should ever do this. You're supposed to do maneuvers and different maneuvers in order to basically get the baby out. And if in fact that doesn't work, then you go to a C-section. Unfortunately, as you all re recall, Right after we filed the suit back in August of 2023, uh, representatives from Southern Regional Medical Center, they came out with a statement saying that the baby was dead before the decapitation, really implying that it was complications of the shoulder dystocia that killed the baby and not excessive traction and trauma to the neck. The Clayton County Medical Examiner's determination when they put out that press release a couple of days ago completely, completely gouges that defense. What they did is that they determined that the cause of death was homicide. And I want to be real semantic in this capacity. Homicide in this context means that the baby's death was due to the hands of another, another human being. Please don't confuse this with criminal homicide, which is basically based upon a statute in Georgia law, OCG, a, uh, there's a statute in, in, in Georgia law that deals with, with homicide and it's a completely different definition. But what, they, what you saw in their press release is that they determined that it was a fracture and dislocation with a complete transection of the upper cervical cervical one and cervical two spine and the spinal cord that caused the death. Uh, I'm not getting into the medical part of it at all, but C1 is the first cervical vertebra in your, in your, in your spine. C2 is the second one. And so there was a disconnection or, or, or break in, in those two. And that was the cause of death. What is really important for the public to understand is that you know, this determination done by the Clayton County Medical Examination uh, Examiners was done very, very judiciously and deliberately and objectively. They went and got the input of an OBGYN expert, an independent OBGYN expert who was out of state, who has done over 10,000 labor deliveries, 
And then they also doubled down on that and got an expert, an independent expert who was from Georgia, who has delivered over 9,000 labor deliveries. They sent the, these experts the medical records and they also basically sent the information to an independent private uh, forensic pathologist. And after basically gleaning all of the information from these experts, their determination of death was a homicide. And practically speaking, what that means again is that contrary to what Southern Regional Medical put out there, that the baby died from complications of the shoulder dystocia before the decapitation, when they put him back, when, when they took her back to the operating room, they came and determined independently that the cause of death was trauma to the neck. The neck was broken and the baby died. And then whether or not the baby was alive when uh, they went back and did the C-section, we don't know because, you know, quite frankly, Southern Region has not been very, very cooperative thus far in terms of discovery. We have not taken one deposition in this case, not because we haven't asked, but because there's been pushback by the defense. I will say this, we did have a conversation with the defense uh, within the last week. And I think we've cleared this stuff up and we're going to be able to briskly get through the, the, the requisite depositions that we need to really find out what happened. We're going to depose everybody who was in the room, all the nurses, all the scrub techs, everybody to find out essentially what the hell happened. What, what happened? Why was there not an alert put out all throughout the hospital to say we have a shoulder dystocia so that new eyes could come in and look? You know, why weren't the proper procedures done in terms of maneuvers and the like? So that's what we're going to do. Uh, again, I, I really want to just, 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 just say that in terms of the term homicide, everybody watches TV and homicide is always associated with a crime. I, I've been, I've practiced medicine for 12 years. I've been doing this basically holding hospitals and doctors accountable for negligence for 20. And I've never seen a circumstance where there's been any kind of criminal allegation made against a doctor. And again, that determination is not something within our purview. We, we have nothing to do with that. That's all under the jurisdiction of the uh, Clayton County Police Department and possibly the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. So we're out of that. We, we have nothing to do with that. But uh, I just want you to know that, that there is a distinction. The homicide that is used in this particular uh, term is basically the death was due to the hands of another person. This case, again, we, we're just talking about the medicine now. But as you all remember, in my opinion, the most offensive aspect of this case deals with the lies and the cover-up that occurred after the decapitation. The fact that Dr. St. Julian came in just a couple of, just an hour or so after the delivery of the baby and failed to tell this couple the details and the specifics of what happened that the baby had been decapitated. That was not done. That was a lie and a cover-up. Lies and cover-ups, again, it is, it, it, the, the hospital staff there at Southern Regional Medical Center were trying to encourage this young couple to get the baby cremated in an effort to destroy evidence. They lied to the couple and told them that they were not amenable. They were, the, 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 a free autopsy paid for by Clayton County was not available to them. They did that, in my opinion, in order to force them into getting the cremation. Again, a lie in the cover of trying to destroy evidence. And then this is the most egregious part of it. Again, when this couple were there, and like, and, and notice, I, I've dealt with dozens and dozens of cases of, of fetal death and fetal demise. It is normal, natural, proper and right for, 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 for parents after their baby is deceased to say, I want to see my baby. I want to hold my baby. I want to touch the baby's fingers before we put the baby away. And they wanted that also. The staff at Southern Regional Medical Center, they lied to them and said, you cannot hold your baby. You cannot touch your baby. And when they did not accept that, when they didn't accept it, they persisted. Then Southern Regional Medical Center, they capitulated a little bit. They said, okay, you can look at your child through a glass window and they wrapped the baby tightly in a blanket, propped the baby's head up on the body and set the baby up through a glass window, basically making it look like there was no decapitation. Once again, just defrauding and lying to this young couple. So that's what this case is about. Again, the significance of the Clayton County Medical Examiner's report is that con consistent with what we've said from the beginning, 
the cause of the death was due to the trauma and the neck being broken and not from any other complications from the shoulder dystocia. So those are my comments dealing with the medicine. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to co-counsel in this case, attorney Corey Lynch, who's going to basically talk about other issues, and then you're going to hear from the clients. Uh, good morning. Uh, there was also a statement made by Southern Regional Medical Center uh, after we filed the lawsuit that they did, in fact, report this to the proper authorities. Um, the medical examiner's report shows that that is also not true. Um, this incident was reported to the medical examiner's office and to the authorities uh, around the morning of July 13th, and it was reported to the medical examiner's office by Willie Watkins Funeral Home in Riverdale, Georgia. And we would like to thank them for doing so because this is a situation that, as Dr. Edmund uh, uh, just stated, that they really, really tried to cover up um, and tried to destroy the evidence of so that they could avoid being held accountable for their actions. Um, I would also like to thank the Clinton County Medical Examiner's Office for their thorough uh, report and for taking the time to get these findings right. Um, Jessica and Travion are, are here. They've been through a lot. Um, as you know, the last press conference we had um, they were too distraught to, to, to be here and to speak. Um, they are here now, um, and I want to open the floor to them uh, if they want to say something. We just want justice for our son. Uh, they lied to us. They ain't let us touch him. Uh, we, don't, we don't like it. Uh, we just want justice for our son. You can. You want to say something? Be done. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We'll. Do you all have any questions at all? Uh, what was your reaction? What was the family's reaction when you the report came out uh, from the medical examiner, basically proving what you guys been saying since the lawsuit were filing out? I mean, it, it was not unexpected on our part. I mean, we, we, I'm, a, I'm a physician. I mean, I, I reviewed the records and it was clear that what caused the baby's death was the trauma to the neck, the, 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 the doctor pulling on the neck and essentially breaking the neck. So this is completely consistent with what it is we knew prior to even filing the case. Uh, it's tragic, it's horrific, but uh, sadly this is the kind of evidence that you need in order to basically prevail in these kind of cases. As a doctor, what is your reaction to the fact that Dr. St. Julian's license is still active today and she still has privileges at that hospital? I, I really have no comment on that whatsoever. I mean, uh, once again, we're still in, an, in, in the early ages of, of, of stages of discovery, uh, not by virtue of, of our lack of effort. We have, we have not taken one deposition in this case. What I need to know is what the hell happened. There were multiple people in the room, nurses, scrub techs, labor you know, assistants and the like, and believe me, once we put them on their oath and ask them what happened, you know, we'll know, we'll know. And so I, I don't have anything extra to add in, in pointing the finger at Dr. St. Julian, I, other than obviously she put too much traction on the baby's neck. And then in, 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 to answer your question about the fact that she's still practicing, I mean, again, I, I, I'm not an expert in terms of who's qualified to practice medicine. They've been doing this to the Georgia Composite Board of Medical Examiners for 100 years, so, so I trust them in, in, in their decisions. We know that this is, you guys are taking civil action mm -hmm. um, against the hospital and the doctor. This has now turned into a criminal case, and the case has been handed to the DA's office. What would the family want to say to the district attorney when considering criminal charges possibly being filed? In yeah, I want to correct you. This has not been turned over to the DA's office. Clayton County and Police told us that they've completed their investigation. They told us this um, last night that they've handed the case to the district attorney's office. Uh, again. What I want to say very, very clearly is that all of that is in their hands. We are civil litigation attorneys. What it is that the judicial system does with, with these facts, that's up to them. Uh, I said it very early on. Again, I practiced medicine for 12 years. I've never seen a circumstance where there has been criminal liability by a doctor being grossly negligent. This doctor was grossly negligent. Whether or not it rises.
rise to the level of, the, of a crime, again, way beyond my pay, way beyond my pay grade. There are an update on the second lawsuit about the person that posted these pictures on social media. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we <coughs> yeah we filed suit against the pathologist. I think his name was Dr. Jackson Gates. 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 Come on, you you, you handle it. Well, we filed suit against Dr. Gates. Uh, to date, he has not answered that lawsuit, um, so he is basically in default. We filed a default motion. Right. Yes. We uh we filed a motion for default judgment in the case because of. Uh, Dr. Gates' failure to answer the uh, complaint or respond to the discovery. We've been unable to determine whether the court has granted that motion. Obviously, most of you know the Fulton County civil uh, case system is down, so I can't locate and determine whether the court has granted that motion. But we're, we're confident that uh, we'll prevail on that. It's been nearly seven months since Jessica went to labor at this point, and just now starting to get these answers that you all have claimed since the lawsuit was filed in August. Can you speak to that trauma that she's endured? I mean, I know it's clear from just seeing her, but... It, you know, it's been tough. It's been tough on the whole family. Um, they have been strong and resilient um, with trying to move forward with life and get back to not normal, but a new normal, um, given the grief that they have sustained. Um, it's been tough, you know, we, I, I keep in close contact with them um, just to kind of lift their spirits up and to see how they're doing. Um, we've also, uh, they have actually sought out counseling as well um, for the grief uh, of this, but it's, it's been a lot, as you can see and as you can probably imagine. I know you all are focused on civil aspects of this case, but is there a family representative, perhaps, or one of you could address if the family does believe that criminal charges should be filed in relation to this case? I, I, I can say that, 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 that the family uh, deeply and fervently trusts the judicial system. And so, again, they, they, they really they don't have an opinion one way or another. They're still stuck in grief. They've lost their child. And... Um, you know, are they sitting back waiting for charges to be pressed against the doctor? The answer is no. Um, they, they're, they're focused on, on healing and recovery. But with this hospital, the hospital, they usually went to for their monthly checkups or their usually checkups during the pregnancy, or was this just something that as soon as she went into labor, they decided to go to this hospital? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, just like in, in most situations in the United States, you have private practices. That's where she got her primary obstetrical care and these physicians affiliated with these private practices they have admitting privileges and delivery privileges at a hospital so there, there was nothing unusual it wasn't like she just popped up on their doorstep you know full-term pregnant no she, she, she was scheduled to be delivered at Southern Regional having been followed by physicians who are on staff at Southern Regional Medical what is the most damning piece of evidence that you think you have in this case that you hope will help you prevail in this lawsuit? Is it this latest findings by the Clay County Examiner's Office, uh, Medical Examiner's Office, or is it, I, I've heard of a video that was taken there by family members during the delivery process. Do you think that would be the most compelling? You know what, there, there is no mo most compelling. It's all really, really jacked up. Every aspect of the evidence that shows what happened is traumatizing. It's something I've never seen in my life from the, the medical records. And, we, and there is a video that we've basically given to the defense uh, which shows the excessive traction. And I'll say this, you know, just how the situation was dealt with afterwards is, is bizarre. I mean, it, 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 it is diabolical in my mind that after this woman has lost her child, that they didn't, weren't candid with her about what happened, that they tried to basically force her to get the baby cremated, to, to, to basically spoil evidence, that they lied to them saying, you can't, you can't get a free autopsy at the, at, the, you know, at, the, at the expense of Clayton County. Now, all of that is, is bizarre. It is bizarre, and, I, and honestly, so, so I, I am gonna answer your, answer your question. The most shocking thing is what happened after the baby was dead. But I just want to, uh, you were referencing this in your initial statement, but um, in the hospital statement, you know, it said the death occurred in utero prior to the delivery and decapitation. I'm going to say this, literally, that's possible. We don't know. Again, we're in the, we're, we haven't even taken a deposition. It's possible that the baby was being delivered, and, and again, the baby's viable. Heart rate is fine and everything, the shoulder social is there, and then Dr. St. Julian broke the baby's neck and killed the baby. That's possible. And then when they went and did the C-section, the baby was dead and then the head came off 
when they pulled the baby, baby out. What's important for you all to understand is that the medical examiner's office said that the baby was killed by the neck trauma, by the, by the, by the doctor breaking the neck. So whether that happened while they were in labor del in delivery or while, it, while, while the baby was, was, was in, in the operating room, the cause of the death was breaking the baby's neck and spinal cord. Uh, that's, that's, that's the take home message. Mr. Taylor said he wants justice for his son. What would justice look like? Oh, wow. Good. Uh, that's, that's tough. Uh, you know, they are distraught. I, I think they, they want um, any and every measure of justice that is available to them. Um, you know, we're, we're not necessarily pushing for prosecution of anyone. Um, but if uh, the Clayton County Police Department, Clayton County DA's office makes that determination, then so be it. Um, our hands are out of that. And we are laser focused on getting them justice through the civil process. Hey, look, once again, like six months ago, we appreciate y'all's attention to this story. Uh, it is bizarre. Y'all have been covering this for a long time. You've never seen anything like this. And sadly, it is true. All right, I wish we weren't here, but we are. And, uh, you know, stay tuned. We're going to take some depositions. In this case, we'll resolve in some capacity, uh, hopefully within the next year or two. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. All right.